Hello, this is Dr. Leone A.T. Madison, and welcome to Achieve Intentional Transformation, Six Steps to Help Women Shift Strategy, Improve Performance, and Grow Revenues. It is such a delight to be here with you today. This webinar, I've been waiting to share so many uh, tips and uh, information with you as I strongly believe that this is a season that a lot of us are called as transformational leaders to help you to truly make the shift that's necessary to um, evolve beyond the season that we're going through. I love what. Um, her name is Barbara Taylor says, she says, I have learned things in the dark that I could never have learned in the light. Things that may have saved my life repeatedly. And so she's concluded that um, there's only one logical, you know, I guess, response or one logical answer or one logical conclusion to everything that she's experienced. And that is that we all need the darkness as much as we need the light. And we know that's easier said than, than done, especially when you're going through something like a pandemic. It just feels like it's a bundled decade of chaos. And I have to admit that as a transformational leader, speaker, and teacher, I have grappled with the dark, undeniable, earth-shattering and earth-shaking traumatic events that we've experienced since uh, 2020. And it has done a couple of things for me that I hope during our session today, you will walk away, you know, even if it's just to think about how you can begin to apply some of the information that you hear today. But for me, um, this pandemic has challenged me, it has changed me, and I have seen growth coming from me. And what I mean by that is that the pandemic has changed the way I love, the way I live, the way I serve, the way I think, the way I, I operate, the way I play, right? And I know you will agree with me when I say it's almost like in the blink of an eye, the very systems, right? the people, structures, and, you know, I don't know if you want to call it, um, it's almost like the things that we were grabbing at, the things that we relied on, the things that we believed in, even our very faith, they were all shaken and, and, and some were broken, some fell, some sh got shattered, some were cracked right? And one of the biggest things that I have noticed during the pandemic is that our culture became so vulnerable. All of a sudden, we were vulnerable. And many of us, many of us were forced or we were um, challenged by the reality or the we were challenged by you know, our own belief system. We were challenged by, uh, uh, it's almost like there was an uprise of, you know, that nudging saying it's time for change. It's time for us to rise up to another level, to up level, to step it up a step, right? To step it up a notch, you know, take a step up. And in taking that step up, Many of us were able to look down at our realities and begin to realize that transformation starts on the inside. And if we want to see the world transform, we first have to be the transformation that we want to see. And so although 2020 felt like I said, this bundled uh, year of chaos, I have further developed my empathy. I have found that it was so important for me to spend time to develop my courage and my creativity. And in doing so, I also deepen into my integrity, into wisdom in, and, and depth. And I would also add to that uh, gratitude, the appreciation of what is noticing the little miracles that were happening around me. 
And so I have become more aware of the resiliency of the human spirit, the resiliency of the human spirit to rise from the ashes of chaos, from the ashes of losses, from the ashes of disappointment, to rise from those ash and to begin to grow and extend our compassion of ourselves, of others, our communities and the world. And so during the webinar today, it is my call to you and to remind us that there is still much work to do. A lot needs to be done to transform from what is so that we all can rise. And those who are sleeping may awaken. It's time to wake up, wake up to the gifts and the talents that's inside of you. It's no longer accepting mediocre. It's no, we, we have no more time to be, um, to be complacent. And so this is an opportunity for us, what I'm gonna to present to us today, to truly think about how we can use the information. And I hope at the end of the session, you'll join me during our seven weeks mentorship program so that you may be able to be in a community where you are helped, healed, and so that you can stand up and take this noble stand and, the, and stand in your confidence as this transformed woman to use the gifts and the talents that's inside of you to make the world a better place, not only for yourself, but for the next generation. So this is who this webinar is for today. It is for women, pioneers, uh, change agents, thinkers, adapters, you know, dreamers who are wanting to shift strategy, improve performance, grow revenues because you need money in order to make an impact. You need, you need, you need revenues. <laughs> you, you need it. And I'll just leave it at that. It is important to have the resources that's necessary to drive the transformation that you're called to, to make. And so during our time together, you learn a couple of things. You learn how to think and get crystal clear about the woman that you want to become. Harvest and examine lessons learned from the past and use the data and the knowledge that you've gained to forge a new path forward. You learn how to release and break free from unsupportive systems and patterns and behaviors that might impede your progress to your transformed self. You learn how to enlist allies and engage with valuable resources to champion your transformation. You learn how to adopt a new mindset and begin to think about what skill sets you need to either refine or strengthen so that you can build your confidence and readiness to boost your performance and results. You learn how to design, I love this, how to design a roadmap with milestones that inspires you to live and breathe enthusiasm about the future as you, my friend, bring your vision to life. Bring that vision to life with confidence and optimism. My promise to you today is to introduce you so that you will experience my six-step transformational action-based system to help you to shift strategy, improve performance, grow revenues, and increase your impact. So on the screen, you'll see a copy of that um, system, what it looks like. And we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into that system so that you get comfortable, get familiar with it. So relax. You know, hope you got your pen or your paper and pencil and, and take some notes during the session. So it will be remiss of me not to talk about the Thread Collection. It's a collection of books and tools and resources that I've designed to help women to restore their faith, their love and life. And in this collection, um, it's a, almost like a personal development self-help resource toolkit and it contains spiritual empowerment tools to boost your performance and deepen your cre creativity 
as well as shine your courage. These are in, this is this is a little package, you know, it's almost like a cure package in a way, you know, and it's a gift to you to say, hey girl, you can no longer stay in the woman that you used to be because you know that you're called to transform lives. And so I've put this toolkit together for you. Now, I have a couple of questions for you. And I want you to lean all the way in and listen to these questions. Jot them down, jot down your responses to these questions because it's going to help us as we navigate through the webinar today. So my questions to you are, are you a smart, driven, and successful woman? But you're navigating burnout from you know, a uh, demanding boss, or maybe you are in a soul draining work culture or an unfulfilling career, or perhaps you're in an unhealthy relationship. And for you, no matter what you do or how hard you try, it's like you have this persistent feelings of shame and guilt and anxiety, low self-esteem, there's this deep sense of emptiness. You feel torn down. Or maybe you find that you are always reactive versus being proactive and you allow your emotions to dictate your actions and allow others to dominate you when it comes to making leadership decisions. Or maybe you lack the tools, the resources, and the skills needed, and even the support that you need to deepen your understanding of yourself and the outcomes that you wanna achieve. Perhaps for you, your soul feels fractured and it's like you're disconnected from your power of intentionality and you know it. You're disconnected from that unshakable confidence that you know that you need to make purpose-driven decisions and to live a purpose-driven life. Maybe you're feeling stuck in an unhealthy relationship or an environment that is emptying out your self-esteem. It's breaking you down. It's breaking your values down and it's shattering your self-worth. Does that describe you? I bet this is also true. You are ready to take action steps, to awaken your consciousness, to heal the broken areas of your life. You're ready. You wanna reconnect to your values and your self-worth and begin to build your confidence so you can increase your effectiveness, your influence and your impact. You need help to cast a new vision and to use committed action steps towards the achievement and sustainability. You want to see your life transformed so that you can transform the lives of those you're called to serve. I bet this is all so, so true. You want to gain the confidence that will allow you to go back and grab, like snatch your lost spark. And you're ready to elevate your performance, skyrocket your productivity, and achieve extraordinary results. I bet this is true about you. That's why you are here. You're here because you're ready to achieve intentional transformation. And I'm so excited. So here's my big question for you. I have a question for you. And the big question is, are you ready? Are you ready to achieve intentional transformation that you want and deserve to see in your life? If you are, I want you to say, yes, 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 yes. And I'm cheering you on because I believe you are called to achieve intentional transformation. And during our time together today, I'm going to be sharing my uh, brand new mentorship program, which is called Achieve Intentional Transformation. It's a virtual seven weeks program designed for you to shift strategy, improve performance, and grow your revenue. If you see on the screen here, uh, there's a tool that uh, I, uh, you know, the, the, um, 
the program was designed around the six step tool that we're going to talk about a little bit later. I'm going to talk about some of the things that's involved in the program. You know, there'll be video lessons, soundtrack, intentional worksheets. You know, you'll get a journal. You'll have weekend Zoom sessions with me, one-on-one -on -one sessions. You'll have expert, you know, industry experts speaking into your life and equipping you to rise from the ashes of where whatever you're going through so that you can begin to soar, you know, soar into the transformed woman that you've always known yourself to be. So let's talk about my six step two. The six step system that we're going to dive a little bit deeper into today is right on your screen. And the six steps are generally the quick overview and then we're going to dive into it. The six steps are think about the word thread. It's an acronym. T-H-R-E-A-D. T for think, H for harvest, R for release, E for enlist, A for adopt, and D for design. Now, I want you to get intentional, and that is what this tool will help you to become more intentional about the way you live, how you talk, what you eat, how you spend your money. It's all about being deliberate. So when we talk about getting intentional, we're talking about getting crystal clear and upfront about your purpose and what adds value to your life and others. Getting intentional meaning that you will make bold decisions and take purposeful, deliberate action on what's important to you. Getting intentional is all about setting an intention to achieve a specific outcome or result in the future that is important to your destiny. Now, once you get intentional, so that's kind of the first three, the three steps will address those first, those couple points that I just made. And then the last three steps now, now once you've gotten intentional, you're gonna gain the confidence to stand in your transformed self and focus on the purpose you were created to fulfill. Once you get intentional, you're going to move forward with fervor, with zeal and great expectation every single day because you know that one you're, one, doing so will help to move you towards the achievement of your goals. Once you get intentional, you're going to enjoy growing with gratitude as the transformed woman that you're called to be. How do I know that? How do I know this to be true? Well, let's talk about who I am. I'm an award-winning organizational and talent development uh, practitioner. And I have had the great honor of helping many CEOs, HR leaders, entrepreneurs, trauma survivors, women in leadership, and students to develop the grit and resiliency to achieve intentional transformation. So I am Dr. Leonie H. Madison. I survived complex trauma, including a near-death stroke. And this ex that experience actually put my, it actually put to test uh, my spirituality. It put to test me, put me to test physically, emotionally, and mentally. And from that experience, I have developed a consciousness of what I'm called to do. I've developed that consciousness to being aware of what I was called and created to do. And my mission and specialty are to help you, women like you, to use the power of your intentionality to shift strategy, improve performance, and grow revenue to influence long lasting change. Now, we're going to dive into the six-step system. Now, we're going to look at step one. Step one is all about thinking outcomes. Here is where I want you to ask yourself the question, who do I want to become? Now, why do I say ask yourself that question? Your thoughts are the main ingredients of your intention. Your thoughts pass through your mind. And when you add your thoughts to focus and your emotions, thoughts become powerful and can affect your reality. Yes, it can affect your reality. Because if here's the thing. If you want to change what's going on on the outside, 
you must first change what's going on on the inside. Transformation is an inside out job. You must change the attention of your thoughts. And why do I say that? Because what you think directly influences how you feel. And how you feel directly influences your body reactions. And how your body reacts is the direct influence on how you behave. And how you behave comes to define who you are and what experience you have in your life. Now, I've developed this little system I want to walk you through about the link between your, um, the link and cycle between your thoughts, your intentions, your emotions, your behavior, and ultimately your outcome. This is what I call attention, intention, reaction, action, and outcome. Whether you believe it or not, everything begins with the thoughts you pay attention to and what you are thinking. So everything starts with a thought, how you think. And then that thought moves to what you intend to do with it. So you then make a decision. It moves from once you make the decision into the feeling zone, your emotion, then it becomes a feeling. That feeling then turns into a reaction, which is now how your body reacts, is your behaviors. And guess what, people? Your life is direct reflection. It is a direct re reflection of your thoughts. And so the outcome that you're living, this reality, the life that you're living right now, is as a result of the thoughts that you give attention to. What I'm proposing is that you consider shifting the cycle around so that you become more intentional, more deliberate, so that you can take control of the outcome that you achieve. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look. I've shared some things around. Instead of starting with your thought, I want you to start with the outcome that you want to achieve, the reality. I want you to begin to feel the outcome of your thoughts. So if you want to become this transformed woman, what does she look like? Start with seeing her. I think this is where I get your guess your eyes vision come into place because you got to see her. So if you want to become a sought after business leader, you're wanting to become a happily married wife. You're wanting to become a healed woman. See that woman now. Then the second step is to decide how and what am I going to do to get me there? Then you have to start paying attention to your emotion. You have to lean into the outcome of the woman you say you want to become and not go back to the stories that you've been telling yourself that I'm not good enough. I don't think I'm going to get there. I don't know how to get there. No, we're not going to entertain those stories because you have to pay attention to your behavior, your feelings. What you feel is what triggers an action. And so what I'm saying is think outcome, decide on who you want to become, Pay attention to your emotions, then turn your emotions into actions. And then ultimately, this is where you're now standing in your transformed self. Because now it's, your life will become a direct reflection of your thoughts. The woman that you say you want to become, that's who everyone will be seeing. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into where I'm coming from with this. Here's a case study. Amy was showing all the signs of burnout. For example, she was stressed out all the time, low self-confidence. She never felt that she was good enough or the work that she was doing was ever good enough. And worst of all, she was stuck in a role that was no, it was not a good job fit for her. And so Amy started stacking up the stories and the evidence through negative self-talk that she was never good enough. She says, I'm not good enough. Things are never going to change for me. I am stuck in a rut. Amy and I started having conversations. She became a mentee of mine. And one of the first questions I asked her was, who do you want to become? She got lit up when we were talking. And she said, I see myself as an HR expert. I love to design systems to help to employees to improve their performance. 
And so she started to dream. She started getting excited. And then we kind of got a little bit more deep. And she said, I see myself getting married. I see myself, you know, living a happily, uh, as a happy, a happy wife. I see myself living by the, by the beach. I see myself working from home, raising my children. She got crystal clear. She saw who she wanted to become. And so we worked together to get more crystal clear about what steps she needed to take to get her there. Amy did the work. She made some bold decisions. She took some bold action steps. And today, Amy is not only an HR expert making six figures, but Amy purchased a home recently where she's living by the beach. Amy not only have one child, she had twin babies. Amy works from home and Amy is living the life that she envisioned. Why? Because she had to stop, think about who she wanted to become and make the decision to take the necessary steps to get her there. Which then leads us over to step two, because I know you're saying, is it that easy? Well, there's work. So now that you know who you want to become, the next step, which is step two, is to harvest data. Because who you want to become and who you're living, they're two separate things, right? And so you've made some decisions that led you to where you are today. And so in step two, we ask the question of what lessons can I learn from my past? What lessons can I learn from my past? Now, I want to walk you through some definition here because I think it's important to understand a couple of things. When we talk about harvesting data, let's look at what data means. Data are facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis, and they're often considered to be assets. When we talk about big data, we hear that quite a lot in business. Big data, big data, what does that even mean? Big data is actually a large collection of data. It is so huge in volume, value, veracity, velocity, and variety. It's a big mass of information that you're dealing with. Now, what does live data mean? Live data, or what I call AKA lessons learned, it's really what we create on a daily basis. We're creating, you know, these experiences that we have can be translated into data. And we pull from that data every single day to make decisions because this data is so powerful. It has meaning and it has purpose, purpose for living. Now let's talk about harvesting data. Harvesting data means you're gonna collect the data, examine the data, test the data and relocate the data, which are valuable life, less life lessons that you've learned from the past. Now, when we talk about data-driven decision-making, we're talking about a process that you use. So you take the data, now you're gonna use the process to inform your decision-making based on the data that's in front of you. You're gonna use this data to say, I'm gonna make a decision that's gonna help me, hurt me, or heal me, and hurt and heal is probably the same. Ladies, good decision-making is an expression of your soul to the world. Yeah, I had to learn that the hard way. Good decision-making, let me say that again, is an expression of your soul to the world. If you can control the process of choosing, you can take control of every aspect of your life. It's paying attention to what am I thinking, leaning in to listen to what stories we're telling ourselves. Pay attention. Is the story real? Is it made up? Will it help me? Will it affect me? Will it heal me? Will it hurt me? It's paying attention because good decision making is an expression of your soul to the world. Let's give you a case study. Mary came to me seeking help about how dissatisfied she was on her job. She was working for a Fortune 500 company. Mary was doing the job of a boss but neither her salary or her job title was reflective of her contribution to the company. 
she wanted to leave the company. She felt that it was better for her to contribute her gifts and talents elsewhere. Mary and I had a deep conversation. And during our time together, we really, really wanted to look at a couple of things. Number one, I asked the question of what decisions have you made that led you to where you are today? And some of the things that we uncovered during our conversation was that Mary would always leave her job when she was dissatisfied. And that impacted her because she's leaving a dissatisfied, she's unhappy. So it impacted how she, who she attracted in the next, as far as the next employer. And so we had a discussion about examining her decision-making pattern and how important it is to self-reflect data. Harvest the data. Take a look at it. Face it. You don't have to, um, you know, uh, what's the word? You don't have to beat upon yourself because of those decisions that you have made. But it's a good practice to examine how did I get here? What decisions have I made? What did I say yes to when everything in my soul was telling me to say no? Here's the thing, ladies. Before you make the next decision, I want you to ask yourself, will this decision, will I regret the results or rejoice in them? It's really good you know, kind of measuring stick when you're about to make a decision. Am I willing to live with the outcome from my decision? Which takes us to the next step, which is step three. This is where we now release patterns. Now, this is where I want you to ask yourself, what do I need to let go of to become the woman I say I want to become? Now, this is not an easy step, but here's the thing, ladies. We are hardwired to resist change. Change is not painful. However, it is our resistance to change that feels hard, painful, and demotivating. Check it out if you think I'm lying. Most people do not realize this, but they're stuck resisting change and are repeating the same behaviors over and over again, hoping for a different outcome. Here's the thing. Hope, faith, without action is not a strategy for transformation at all. And so when we talk about releasing old patterns, we're talking about being focused, being focused on a couple of things, things that we can examine, things that we can face and fix if only we stop and take a look at these things. So here are a couple of strategies uh, for you to explore. I want you to begin to, you know, notice your decision-making pattern. Find out what it is. Take a look at the data that you've accumulated from your life experience and face the outcome from your past decisions that led you to where you are today. So powerful. Nobody can hold anything over you. When you face the reality of your decision, nobody can shame you. Nobody can bring you down because you are aware. And this is the, the week during our mentorship program where I bring in an industry expert to teach you about emotional intelligence, being in very intelligent about your emotions and how your decisions impact not only yourself, but the people that you interact with. The next thing I want you to do when we talk about releasing old patterns is to forgive your mistakes. And know that when I say forgive your mistake, forgive if you're if you're in a bad relationship, if you are in a toxic job situation, forgive that experience. And know that you have the power to make better decisions to create a positive vision for your future. And this is where now you break free from unsupportive patterns that might impede your progress. And how do you do that? I've developed a tool I call the real method. R-E-A-L, real, real, real. 
And this will help you to get unstuck. So if you're feeling stuck and you're repeating the same behaviors over and over and wondering why you're getting the same results, I want you to begin to shift how you're looking at this and begin to release it by reaching for new things that add value and are aligned to your value. It adds values to your life. And for you, it may mean, um, you know, you're going to reach for uh, thinking, you know, differently about your job. It could be that you're reaching for, you know, volunteer opportunities where you can begin to build more skill set or grow your network. For you, it may mean that, you know, it's time to start um, healthy living, active living, healthy living, right? You're going to reach for new things. The E is for embrace. So the R is for reach, E is for embrace. Embrace. Start doing more things that bring joy into your life. And it could be exercise. You start exercising, you start walking more, you know, you start reading more books that, you know, uplift, empower, and build new skill set. Start embracing, bringing more things, new things into your life that brings you joy. And then the A is accelerate. This, I love this part because now you're going to accelerate the things that help you to progress in life. And that could mean, you know, you start coaching, start you know, um, men the mentorship program, because now you're accelerating, you want to move from where you are, and you have some gifts and talents in you that you are aware of, but this is where having a coach or a mentor will help to unlock your potential and help you to soar to new heights. And then the L is to let go. Let go of the things that have kept you stuck and trapped to an old story. Just let them go. Bless and release them. They've served their time, and now is now it's it's the right time to bless and release it and let it go. No apology. Thank it for what it has done, the lessons you've learned, and it's time to move on. So let's quick case study. Uh, Linda. Linda came to me, and uh, she was part of a leadership team in the healthcare industry. But she felt like, you know, her career, she, she enjoyed what she was doing, but she wanted to pursue her passion. And she felt it was her life purpose to become an orthopedic doctor. We met, we discussed what would it look like for her to get to where she's wanting to go. And so we used the REACH method to identify what was holding her back. What was those stories that she kept telling herself, right? So it was holding her back from pursuing her dream of becoming a doctor. She started reaching for new things. So she started applying for medical school. She took the exam. She moved back home, you know, into her parents' home so she could save money for the application and save money for an apartment when she moved. She started accepting accelerating the things that were working in her life. She had a place to stay. So she stayed there. Yeah, it meant that she had to give up her apartment elsewhere, but she was given that up temporarily and for a good reason. Here's the thing. Now, Linda is in medical school. And what brings me joy is to hear from Linda when she says to me, Dr. Lee, I'm pursuing my passion. This is my call. This is what I was called to do. I was called to transform lives through research, education, and personal care. And that brings me so much joy to see how she took the steps to release the old story of, I'm stuck in this job. I don't know what to do to know. I acknowledge where I am, but I'm going to reach for new things. I'm going to embrace the fact that I have the power to change my story. I'm going to accelerate what's working well in my life and let go what no longer serves or is aligned to the woman that I say I want to become. Let's do a quick recap of the first three steps. So we talk about looking in. Thinking about the woman that you want to become, that's step one, that think, T, and it, it really uh, forces us to look deep within ourselves, to get into the future and bring the future into a present, right? And the second step, we had to look back. We had to go back and look at data that were we, we used to inform the decision that led to where we are today. So we looked back. 
And then we had to let go. We had to let go off of those things, people, places, processes, systems that no longer serve the woman that we say we want to become, right? So that's the first three steps was all about looking in, looking back, letting go. Now we're going to go over to the last three steps, steps four to six. Now you're ready to begin your journey to identifying your strengths, growing and accelerating your skills, and stepping into your transformed self. What do I mean by that? Step four is all about enlisting allies. This is where I want you to ask yourself the question Do I need or do I have an impartial person I can work with? or tools to help support the transformation I am looking for, that vision that you have in mind. Now, to achieve the intentional transformation that we've covered, ladies, you need someone who has been there, knows how to help you to understand yourself, knows how to help you to navigate through the obstacles, the roadbacks and the setbacks, and they're willing to affirm you and to hold you accountable for reaching your goals. You need that support. Now, this is where I encourage you to leverage the guidance of an expert, such as an impartial person, such as a coach, a mentor, a therapist, you know, someone with perspective and experience, someone who knows how to break you through those self-limiting beliefs and help you to be able to navigate the different challenges, you know, so you can continue to propel forward in the life that you want to live. Engage. When we talk about enlisting allies, we're talking about engaging with resources such as books, workshops to finally free yourself of the story that's been holding you back from experiencing the life and the relationship that you want. When we talk about enlisting allies, here on the screen, I share, I call this um, building a circle of support. And in the support, if you notice the boxes, you have um, books. That's a support, workshops, friends, maybe a therapist, a coach, or a mentor. And then I want you to be very deliberate about identifying what is it that you're looking for from these support system. What do you want? Be able to identify, say, I'm building my circle of support, and this is specifically what I want from each of my support system, okay? Your allies will help you to unlock your potential as you explore and engage with alternative solutions to break through personal, professional, and business success. Your allies will help you to build your inner and external skills. They'll help you to grow your potential and your emotional intelligence. They'll help you to you know, teach you how to show up from truth, how to connect and reconnect and even anchor into your transformed self. Your allies will help you to own your success by connecting the wisdom of everything that you've learned from your past. You're gonna connect it with your vision of the outcome that you will achieve. Your allies will help you to enlist, you know, um, kind of looking at what's working, what isn't working, what you need to stop, what you need to accelerate, what you need to let go so that you can achieve stellar result for yourself. Which then takes us to step five. Step five is all about mindset management, how to adopt a new mindset. And here's where I want you to ask yourself the question of, are my words and actions aligned with my transformed self? Mm. Yeah, you have to ask yourself those questions. Why? Because we live in a world of thoughts, a world of words. Words are powerful. And our thoughts and our words create our experiences. And thus we experience what we think and we experience what we 
we say what we speak out in the atmosphere and give life to words are spiritual they're they're alive they're alive and they're powerful and the quality of our thoughts creates the quality of our lives and the i would say the volume and the quantity of our words create the quality of our life it's not the thoughts that pass through your head that impacts your life no it's the ones that you take possession of and think of on a daily basis. And once you agree to give attention to your thoughts, guess what? It becomes more and more real to us. And over time, has more and more power over your life. Ladies, please understand. You are not your thoughts. You're not your mistakes. You are the thoughts you give power and attention to. I want you to rise up to know, to the knowing, to the knowledge, to the wisdom that you are a thinker. You were called to transform lives. You are a brave soul on a journey towards intentional transformation. Now I have to plug in every time I'm doing this. My computer clocks out on me and so I have to charge up. Okay. I'm getting a notification here that my computer is actually dying on me and I can't allow that to happen during our webinar. Okay, this is reality people. So where, where was I? Um, please understand that you know your thoughts are so powerful and when you give attention to your thoughts, they become your reality. And so your thoughts are these endless streams of ideas and they're running through your mind they're powerless until you decide to cling on to one of them, which then trickles down. It's like, almost like into a chain. And the very app makes you the thinker of your thoughts. Let me be a little bit more clear. Imagine your mind as a farm, right? To be a farm. And your thoughts to be the seeds. So your mind, the, th the, the farm, and your thoughts are the seeds. You can plant either good seeds which are roses, or you can plant bad seeds like poison ivy. Whichever seed you choose to focus on and plant, it will grow and it will multiply. If this, and uh, an orange was a seed that then, um, uh, the seed, then there's a tree, and then we get the fruit from it, then we get orange juice and all kinds of stuff, right? Why? Because it grew and it multiplied. And the same happens in our minds, in your mind. Whichever thought you choose to focus on and plant, it will then grow and multiply. You are the planter of the seeds. You are the thinker of your thoughts. My question to you is, do you want your mind to flourish flourish into this garden of roses? Or do you want your mind to flourish into a form of poison? Ladies, you can create new patterns and create a new reality. Why? Because you can recondition yourself. This isn't something that you change overnight. No, this is a lifetime commitment to being mindful and to reprogramming and to growing. It is a life, life, lifelong commitment. And this is where neuroscientists refer to it as neuroplasticity. The idea and I would say the reality that you can rewire your brain by creating new behavioral patterns where new cells Wire together and wire together to rewire your brain. Yes, neuroplasticity refers to your brain's ability 
to restructure or rewire itself when it recognizes the need for adoption. In other words, it can continue developing or changing throughout life. When we rewire your brain, it might sound like it's a complicated thing, but it's absolutely something that you can do from home. And during the program, we'll have an expert come in and show us how to do this because it's so important in the transformational process. We talk about adopting a new mindset. Here's how I want you to be thinking about this as well. I want you to know that you can increase your awareness by observing your emotions and your body reactions. I want you to be more conscious of what thoughts you give your attention to. Remember, it's what you give attention to becomes your reality. The next time you feel a strong emotion, I want you to bring your awareness to it by pausing and asking yourself. So go ahead, ask yourself. What you're thinking right in this moment, will it hurt you? Will it heal you? Will it, or will it help you? Ask yourself that question. The thoughts that you're thinking right in this moment, what will it do for your life in the next 30 minutes, the next day, the next 20 years? And so the last step in this system, before we get to the last step, I must talk about myself a little bit, share my story. Um, I'm an author, teacher, and a trauma survivor. And I've been doing, I mean, great things over, you know, across several industries. And after reflecting on several milestones, achievements of my life, one of the things I discovered a couple of years ago was that there was a dissonance between who I was living versus who I felt deep in my heart I was created to be. And I made that decision that I was going to change that story. I made that decision that before I reached my 40th birthday, that things were going to change for me. I took the steps. I made, I mean, really tough decisions, such as relocating across from the East Coast to the West Coast. I made a decision after my divorce that I was going to show up as a transformed woman and I was gonna do the work. I was gonna enlist allies to support me. I was gonna learn the skill set that were necessary for me to release the old story that I was always going to be a victim, a victim to my culture, a victim to my old story, a victim to my old experiences. I made that decision that I was gonna change that. And I'm really happy to share that although I've been through several traumatic, I mean, traumatic experiences I've had, and it's in my book that's called The Thread, Restore Your Faith, Your Love, Your Life. I also became this woman who survived stroke. I'm this woman who's now a sought after business leader. I'm a COO. I help individuals, teams, and organizations to achieve intentional transformation, and I love to do it. I can do it with my eyes closed. Because, because I have experienced the personal transformation in my life. And I want the same for you. I want you to achieve intentional transformation so that your life will be unrecognizable. And so adopting a new mindset is all about change and understanding that change is the only evidence that signals that you're growing. And change is the only evidence that also signal that you are evolving. You're evolving beyond your story. And so you can use your imagination. You can use your intentionality to change the trajectory of your life. And I'll be remiss if I say that you can do this on your own. We need to co-create this transformation with God. And we need to believe that God has put people in the earth right around you in the midst of all the chaos and all of the trauma that we've experienced. There's still good people in the world like myself and others who have gone through the personal transformation and we want to see you succeed as well. Which then leads us to our last step, which is step six, design your success. 
I love this because if you're going to grow, you have to be intentional. You have to be deliberate. So here's the truth, ladies. You know who you want to become. You've learned lessons from the past and know how to use the data to make better decisions. You have a three-step tool that I walk you through that you can use to release painful patterns. You are thinking about the resources that you need to support your transformation. You are ready to step into your new, wiser, and transformed self. Yes. So here's the thing to design your success. I want you to know that you never have to tr shrink yourself for someone else's comfort. No. I want you to know that it is time for you to shine your light bright as possible. Because when your light is shining, it gives hope and inspiration to others to do the same. I want you to stay in alignment with the woman that you are becoming. It is time, ladies, for you to design your success. I love what John C. Maxwell says. And he says, an unintentional life accepts everything and does nothing. An unintentional life embraces only the thing, but an intentional life, sorry, an, um, an intentional life embraces only the things that would add to the mission of significance. Today, I promised you a walkthrough of my step-by-step, six-step system to shift strategy, improve performance, and grow revenues so you can increase your impact and your influence. I promised you that you will learn how to get crystal clear about the woman that you want to become. I promised you that you will know how to examine lessons learned from your past and how to look at the data in a different light. See the data as your life lessons learned and the data will help you to make a better informed decision going forward. I promised you that you will learn how to break free from unsupportive patterns that might impede your progress and take bold action steps to build an unshakable confidence as you step into your transformed self. I promised you how to get rely that you will learn how to get reliable resources and engage with these resources so that you can begin to build your confidence, reconnect to the power of your intentionality to champion your transformation. I promise you that you learn how to embrace a new mindset, learn new skills, and innovative behaviors to empower you to bounce out of bed every day, brimming with excitement, right? And so you also learn how to design the milestone because you already know who you are. You know what you want. You know where you've been. And it's time for you to release what no longer serves you so that you can begin to build the skill set to step into this transformed woman. So that's the six-step system. Think and decide who you want to become. Harvest data from lessons learned from your past. Release old patterns. Enlist allies to support your transformation. Adopt a new mindset and design your success. Ladies, you have a choice. You can stay stuck not knowing what decisions are keeping you stuck in an unhealthy um, environment or you know unsupported behaviors or patterns, you can go back to struggling to decide who you want to become. You can keep holding on to unsupportive systems, to old stories that do not support the transformed woman that you say you want to become. Or if you want a life that represents intentional transformation, a life that you get to co-create with God, where you have unlimited joy and a deep peace within you because you know you are on purpose. Here's what I recommend that you do. I want you to head over to my website, www.neonimattison.com slash mentoring slash apply for the program the seven weeks mentorship journey to intentional transformation. Schedule some time with me so that we can discuss what outcomes that you want to achieve and how I can help you and support you to get there. Who is this for? This program is for thinkers, for adapters, for catalysts, 
for warriors, for pioneers, for dreamers, for trailblazers. This is a program for women who are ready to achieve intentional transformation in their life. My mission is your transformation. And that is why I'm doing this. So if you ask me why you're doing this, Dr. Lee, it's because that's my mission. Also, there are too many smart, beautiful, brilliant women who are giving away their power. Too many talented women are stuck in soul draining careers, toxic relationships, dead end jobs that are negatively impacting their life and their purpose. And I want to change that. Plus, I know you will need support in executing everything that you've heard today, the six steps, and you need the support to execute the steps that are necessary for you to achieve intentional transformation. So if so, we can discuss it and see if this program is a good fit for you. If not, that is also okay. A little bit more about the, um, the mentorship program and what the journey looks like. You have a week where it's a welcome week to do the assessment, set up some time to speak with me once you've registered. And then you start the journey week one of, you know, learning how to think and decide of who you want to become, harvesting the data to become more self-aware, release all patterns, you know, with my three-step tool. Week four is all about enlisting allies. Week five is how you adopt a new mindset. Week six is to design the roadmap to bring your vision to life. And week seven is where we celebrate your progress and we give recognition to, you know, those who have progressed and, and achieved intentional transformation. We're going to recognize you both on the website. You know, if you want to be recognized in social media, you know, we, we are going to recognize and celebrate your um, transformation. And uh, I love what T.D. Jake says. He says, even great even the greats question themselves, but here's the thing, yet they face and feel the fear and do it anyway. In the program, you may be asking, okay, what's involved and how much does it cost? The seven week mentorship journey, it is an online um, you know, program. And as I made mention before, in addition to the seven weeks journey that map that I just shared with you, you have a digital workbook that you'll get as part of the program, values-based journal. You'll have the six-step tool. You'll have recordings. You'll have, you know, a meditation soundtrack. You know, it's a lot of information, so you're going to need some time to kind of process everything. You'll be exposed to and engage with industry speakers who will come in to speak on topics such as emotional intelligence, difficult conversations, neuroplasticity, how to deal with grief. When I say let go, sometimes it's going to feel like you're grieving the loss. How do you deal with that? You'll have video lessons, um, group sessions, one-on-one -on -one group sessions. We're going to have group sessions, sorry, as a group. One of the first things we're going to do in our group session is a vision board exercise. So I'm so excited about that in week one. And you'll have powerful, intentional, transformational sh sheets with, um, you know, conversational questions that you need to be asked. I call them my get intentional question, must ask questions when you're making a decision, about to make a decision. And then you have affirmation cards and tons of other resources designed specifically for you. You have two options when it comes to enrollment. Option one is the painful. You'll receive a 45, everything that I just shared, plus a 45 minute coaching, coaching session with me before week one. You'll also receive a free copy of my new book that's coming out, but I'm not gonna share what it is yet. Uh, only those who are part of the program will you know, get uh, inside information and access to that resource. And then option two is you know, two payments. And you can make two payments, one in the beginning and one um, at uh, week three. And um, you'll also receive a 45-minute coaching session after the second payment um, has been made. Your next steps. Visit www.leonimadison.com slash mentoring. Ladies, space is extremely limited. And I'm only taking a small amount of women so that I can truly focus on helping you to achieve intentional transformation. So I do encourage you to sign up now. I appreciate the gift of your time. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to Achieve Intentional Transformation. Your transformation is my mission, and I do look forward to seeing you in the program. Have a wonderful rest of the day.